in today's video what we're going to discuss is how do we code up an ERC1155 NFT contract in my previous video I've discussed what an ERC1155 NFT is it's a little different from a regular ERC721 NFT in the sense that one token can have multiple owners over here and multiple editions basically of a single token if you're looking for a refresher please make sure you watch my previous video I think I link somewhere over here and I'm going to remove my glasses today because there is some light source here I don't know if you see <laughs> anyway by the end of the video you should be able to code up a smart contract for ERC1155 and I'll walk you through how you can achieve a few different things like allowing people to pay you for minting a specific NFT and limiting the total supply for any kind of token or NFT over there hopefully by the end of the video you should come out with enough knowledge to create your own contract and then after that in the next video we'll see how to deploy it and add a mint button to the website but before we start the video please make sure to hit that like button subscribe leave a comment you know it really helps me out to figure out what people want to watch and those are the kind of videos that i will create in the future with that said let's get started so like always i have opened open zeppelin the wizard for open zeppelin uh, it's wizard.openzeppelin.com and i went to the erc1155 tab uh, i filled out a name my token is fine with me and a uri uh, now this uri is very important because this allows us to add a metadata to that nft and that is how OpenSea and other marketplaces figure out what is the art or jpeg behind a specific nft i also added a mintable feature and added an ownable access control the rest i have left as is uh, but you can of course play around with these the next thing i'll do is i'll click on open in remix and it opens up uh, with all the code that we have written now the only the only problem with just using this specific code is that only the owner can mint any any kind of nfts and then the owner basically goes out and sells it instead of letting somebody else mint it by paying for the smart contract if you're looking for something like that this is the way to go uh, so i'll just explain quickly how to do it if you're just looking to mint nfts for yourself and then sell it later on uh, and not do an automatic mint button kind of a strategy so this looks fine just click on compile uh, once the compilation is done we will go here on this portion and then we'll select the contract my token and click on deploy this is remix by the way remix is an solidity ide provided by ethereum so that's nice so to mint an nft over here i click here and then i basically enter my address that i copy let's say token id will be one and the amount the number of editions that i want to mint for that nft on token id one will be three and the data i don't want to add anything so i'll just add 0x00 all right uh, make sure it's 0x00 and nothing else if you don't want to put any data if you want to put it some data I hope you figure out how to do that because it's a little out of scope for this video so now I click on transact and voila you can see the tick sign over there which means the transaction has gone through to figure out if the transaction really did go through I'll check the balance uh, I'll enter my address and I'll enter the token ID as one and call and the answer is three which means i own three of the nfts that are present on token id one let's say i try it out with some other address that i copy and then i paste it over here the answer that returns is zero which means the person has zero nfts on I on token id one let me just go back and copy my own address and uh, paste it again here but let's say now i want to figure out how many nfts that do i own for token id 2 i press on call and the answer is zero because i don't own any so let's just fix that uh, i click on i change the id to 2 and the amount to let's say 18 for the second token i will own 18 versions of it i click on transact again and it it goes through without any problem i click on call now it changes from 0 to 18 and this is how basically a simple minting works uh, the difference being that i am the owner only i can mint it and if somebody else tries to mint they get an error and once minted i have those nfts i can go out and sell because you know i own them 
if you're looking for something like this it's very simple just this is this is it this is where you have to stop you don't need to do anything else make sure that while minting you enter the correct values and you're done of course uh, if you had seen my previous video you would know that this url is very important which we have entered over here uh, this is how basically any of the marketplaces will figure out what is the art associated with this nft or what is the image jpeg whatever asset any kind of asset that is associated to this specific nft if you open eip 1155 you'll you'll see that metadata part there is basically a process where you know they explain that if you add id in in the url the marketplaces are supposed to replace it with a hex token id so for token id 314592 it becomes 0x4cc e0 and uh, that's what they have written over here and pad it up with 64 leading zeros but coming back now uh, now let's say we want to have a situation where token 1 can have 50 versions token 2 can have 100 versions token 3 can have 150 versions and no other tokens are possible but we also want to let anybody mint that token by paying certain amount of fees for that specific token so to do that what we're going to do is create an array of supplies you and i think 16 is enough and then array symbol and supplies another thing that we can do is uh, just add let's say 50 100 and 150 as the values in this specific array so this means basically we want to limit uh, the token number 1 to 50 token number 2 to 100 and token number 3 to 150 now we come to the mint portion and we remove the only owner part and i think we can remove the mint batch because it will just create some confusion we can also get rid of address account over here so that uh, only the person who's sending the money is able to mint it now here we put a require statement which basically says that id needs to be less than the supplies dot length and another thing that we need to make sure is that id is not equal to zero because that is a token that we don't offer the mint account will be message dot sender which basically means who is giving out this transaction who is trying to transact who called this mint function another thing that we can do is remove this data call and just make it an empty string and just simply remove it from here now we have not not made sure that the number of tokens that have been minted are less than the supply so we need to keep a track of to total tokens that have been minted so to do that we'll be like unit un16 minted 000, zero, zero. so whenever a token gets minted we increase the minted count and it should always be less than supplies count because this is an array and this is a token id which starts from one and array index starts from zero we need to reduce the id by one to get the correct index so we can be like uint index is equal to id minus one now we can require that minted index plus amount needs to be less than or equal to supplies not enough supply otherwise we throw this error not enough supply supplies index sorry <laughs> and every time the mint is successful what we will do is we will increase the count of this index by the amount there you go there you have it now let's test this out i'll compile and compilation gave me an er gave me an error because the u int is 256 for amount and it's 16 for minted so i think a simpler hack right now will be 256 but to save on gas i think everything can be 16 but anyway we are running low on time so <laughs> i'm just going to go with 256 and lo and behold everything has compiled without a problem great now we deploy it to the test blockchain that we have uh, first we re remove the old contract we find our my token contract and then we deploy great so the my token contract has been deployed and we can see that now it only accepts two functions two arguments sorry id which is the token id which can be one two three because otherwise we will reply with token doesn't exist and the amount that we want to mint so let's say i enter token id 5 which should give me an error and amount 123 or whatever so when i click on transact you can see over here 
that there is an error and the reason provided by the contract is that token doesn't exist. So this part is working. Let me try out zero and click on transact and I got the same error again. Will negative values work? Uh, it should not work because minus one is actually the biggest value for unsigned integers. There's no such thing as negative values in unsigned integers, but let us just try it. When I click on it, it says uh, value out of bounds and it gave another, which is a different error than I expected, but it can be simply fixed with putting greater than over here. Uh, I think greater than zero is a better thing to do and then compiling it again. Once compiled, we go back, we select my token and deploy it again. Once deployed, we go here again. We try with five. It didn't work. We try with zero. It did not work. We try with minus 12. It did not work. It's getting an error, but yeah. And minus one as well doesn't work. Great. So what will work? ID one, two and three will work. So let me try out ID one and the amount that is there should be less than 50, less than or equal to 50. So let me try out with 15 and I click on transact and it has worked. And how do we know it has worked? We can figure out our contact address and we can find the balance for ourselves. It's 15. Now let me change my account to a different contract, copy uh, that address and now paste it over here and find my balance for token ID one, which is zero. Now I want to have 25 tokens. So I click on transact by changing after changing that to 25 and it has worked. Now I click on call. It says 25. Great. So 15 plus 25, 40 tokens have been uh, assigned 10 are remaining and you saw that a non owner was able to claim it as well. Of course, we didn't have to pay for it right now, but we will figure that out as well. Now let me try to claim 25 more because then we will move over the total supply that that is available for this specific token. So when I click on transact, I get an error which says not enough supply. Amazing. So our code works. If you're trying to create an actual contract, what you should do is make these somehow queryable so that a user can call some method and find what is the total supply for a specific token and how much has been minted. So the next thing that we'll do is make this function payable so that people can pay some specific money to the smart contract and so now we go back to the contract and we figure out the rates with a rates array and let's say the first token will be 0.05 ether the second token will be 0.1 ether and the third token will be 0.025 ether and we need to make the mint function payable and we need to require msg dot value should be greater than or equal to amount like the number of tokens they want to purchase into the rate of that token otherwise we can just say not enough ether sent great now we try and compile this contract and it compiled without any problem we go over here again we remove the deployed contracts that are there and uh, we select our main this thing main account and we click over here, select my token and deploy again and deployment succeeds. Now you see the mint is in red because it's a payable function. So when we open, we see two fields and this is where we enter the amount of value that we need to send as a payment. So let's say we left it at zero and we try to mint 10 tokens for the first ID. Uh, we will get an error which says not enough ether sent. So for 10 tokens, what we need to do is 0 0.05 into 10, which is 0.5. Yeah, 0 0.5 ether. Okay, Remix doesn't accept decimals. So what we need to do is go to Fini and add 500 of this. So 500 Fini is 0 0.5 ether because 1000 Fini is one ether. Now this should definitely work and it has great 
and if we check out our balance for the first token it is zero because i copied the wrong address i copy the right address and i paste and it says 10 amazing so this is how people can pay you uh, another thing that we haven't added over here is the withdraw function that i have shown in a previous video but i think i should show it again the function name will be withdraw which will be a public and only owner function so only owner can call it uh, then we need to require address of this and the balance of that address needs to be greater than zero otherwise we give an error balance is zero and once the balance is not zero what we'll do is we'll figure out the owner's address which will be which we need to make payable and then we transfer the address balance and that's it that's, that is how you withdraw from any sort of smart contract so let's just compile it again and once the compilation succeeds we deploy it actually we remove the old one and then we deploy it now let me try withdraw the money and it says balance is zero uh, now let me mint 10 of the nfts and i need to send 500 finny and i click on transact the transaction worked uh, you can see that my address has 10 nfts and uh, the amount of ether that is left is 98.99 now if i click on withdraw that should send that ether back to my address so i clicked on withdraw and the and it succeeded and you can see that i have 99.499 ether now now let me try to mint it from an another account let's say this third one uh, i'll be minting 1000 finny which means 20 tokens of the first token 20 copies of the first token i click on transact and it worked the amount of ether left over here in this account is 98.99 i switch back to the owner account and now i click on withdraw it worked and i have now 100.499 ether now can i withdraw using some other account let me try the third fourth fifth account to withdraw the money click on withdraw and there's an error ownable caller is not the owner so there you go that is how you create a small erc1155 nft which means an nft that can have more than one copy how many copies this is what we have defined over here so you have full option to define how many copies you want the number of copies will not exceed more than the ones that you have defined over here and these are the rates that are there for people to mint these nfts and then this is where i think i would finish the video in the next video we will create a mint button for people to come to your website and mint these nfts thank you so much uh, for watching the whole video uh, hope you liked it please make sure to hit the like button subscribe to the video leave a comment or something so that i know if you liked it youtube knows you liked it and it shows it to more and more people also any of the comments that you leave actually influence me to create whatever video that i want to pick up next so if you want something specific to be picked please leave a comment if it gets a lot of likes i'm definitely going to make a video on that thank you so much again for watching the video i hope to see you again next week Bye-bye.